COO, former longtime MMA manager, now on the promotional side of things, Lex McMahon. Lex, how you doing tonight? I'm uh, wonderful, man. Thank you so much for having me on, brother. Uh, of course, it's great to have you, man. And uh, so, how long have you been with Titan now? Because I remember you as a longtime fight manager. Yeah. What's it like being in that promotional side now? You know, I've been with it for two years, and it's a blast, man. It's a different aspect. You know, I, my background, I, I come from the venture capital world where every, you know, week, basically, we were looking at new businesses. We were doing due diligence, looking on new industries. Uh, so for me, you know, I was on the management side and still am a little bit, but really have, have, have began shifting to all my efforts to the promotional side. Uh, I'm learning every day something new. And... Uh, that's exciting. It's stimulating. Uh, there's just a lot of opportunity, uh, a lot of hard work, and you know the landscape of the management side has changed significantly. So, you know, looking at it from a business perspective, the opportunity and the timing made sense. Uh, and you know, been on the ground doing it for two two years, and you know now that we're here in South Florida, uh, shows are coming fast and furious every six to eight weeks. So it it's, it's requires pretty much all my energy as it is. You know, being somebody that comes from a management background, is it is it ever like a weird eye-opening thing to be on the other side of the equation? Like now being on the promotional side, do you ever look at a manager's perspective and be like, man, some of the headaches the promoters used to give me, I now understand where they were coming from. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And, you know, I, I, I hope that my experiences, you know, over the, the past almost seven years um, – allow me to, to have a perspective to, to be, I think, a bit more understanding and also to be more collaborative in coming up with solutions to get things done. Because I understand what it is to wear both hats. Um, and, and I can genuinely understand, you know, the challenges. Promoting it is really tough, man. Like, the, it's not an easy, it's not like you, you're in there making millions of dollars right off the bat. Let's remember how long it took Dana, Lorenzo, and Frank to start making money. Yeah, it was about 40 some odd million dollars before they started making money in years. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a labor of love. It's something that, that we're doing because we're passionate about it. We believe in it. Um, but, it, man, it's, it's a heavy lift. Not easy, for sure. And, you know, you mentioned Dana and Lorenzo, what they had to go through to build the UFC. You know, your shows are now streaming on a UFC platform, on UFC Fight Pass. How does that agreement work? Is there any kind of collaboration there? Is there any relationship between Titan and the UFC? Or is it kind of more of like a, a client type of relationship? You know, I mean, listen, there, there's a contractual relationship, uh, you know, but it really has been a partnership. Uh, I say it all the time. They are amazing advocates for, for Titan FC. Um, they are always trying to find ways to support us, uh, providing new resources to, to make sure that we're, we're going above and beyond and that we're, we're putting out a great product because at the end of the day, our success is their success. So, I mean, they, they've been nothing but amazing. And, and it, you know, it helps because I have a great relationship with Dana. I feel like I've got something to prove to him because he, he kind of took a leap of faith and, and, and signed Titan when, you know, I, I approached him about it. And he said, all right, brother, let's do it. You know, so now I'm busting my ass to kind of deliver on the promises that I made to him that, hey, I'm going to give you great shows all the time. And, you know, I think so far we've done it. And it could be a great start, of course. Well, a great continuation of that process uh, next weekend when you have this Titan 38 show at Mikasuki. Looks like a great card, Lex, if you can tell us more about it. I, I will first and foremost say that one of the guys at the top of your card, Steve Carl, been a huge fan of his throughout his days in Bellator, uh, his days uh, in, um, he was in World Series of Fighting, the Ultimate yeah. Fighter, the guy's been everywhere. He's been everywhere. Listen, 22-4, and four, I mean, this, this is a legit dude. This is a big signing for Titan. We're super excited uh, to have him anchoring the show, but we've also got an amazing prospect in Bilal Muhammad who is, let me see if I get this right, Bilal, remember the name Muhammad. <laughs> he, he, he's, he, he's the truth, man. The, the dude is a legit, legit fighter. So is that his official nickname, remember it, the name? It is. I love it that. Is. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's pretty sweet. Dude's a real serious fighter. So I think that's a tough match. I think Steve's in for a tougher match than he probably anticipates. Um, but it's going to be a great fight for the fans. And, and by the time we get to the main event, you know, that's going to be a great championship bout. When these shows are happening, are you like so busy behind the curtain? Do you get to like sit there and watch the fights at all, or are you running around like a crazy person? A, l a little bit of both. A little bit of both. You know, uh, my partner Jeff Aronson and I, uh, we we've got the the table right next to the announce booth, you know, and we've got our own monitor and headset, so we can hear what's going on. I'm the guy on the ground, like you know, yeah. 
Je- Jeff gets to be kind of the face of the, the whole thing, and, and I'm the guy in the trenches, you know, getting things done day to day. And so I run around a lot during the shows, but I, I do find time to sit with him and, 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 and watch the shows. And, and I've been fortunate, man. We've seen some great fights on Titan so far over, over the past couple of years that we've had it. And I think you're going to see more on that because we're getting some really high-level, talented fighters that we're signing here in, in the South Florida area. Because, listen, there's so much talent here, man. Yeah. Between the Black Zillions, ATT, MMA Masters, blah, blah. I mean, there's so much talent here. Is that kind of uh, do you work that way? Do you sort of start with South Florida to funnel in the talent and then move elsewhere? Or, or do you just have your channels all kind of, over? It's kind of the reverse, right? Yeah. Because we were going all over the country and the world. I mean, we've got fighters on the roster from Brazil, from Wales, from, I mean, from all over. Um, and, and now that we're, you know, we decided to make South Florida our home base, I mean, organizationally, we're based in, in, in Pompano, but to start doing our shows here on a consistent basis, you know, we needed to go from casting a much broader net to focusing in on this local talent. Uh, fortunately, and I think part of why it made sense from a business perspective is the fact that there is so much amazing talent in South Florida. Probably more so concentrated talent than anywhere else in the world. You have all these amazing gyms and all this talent, and they're all and, and more and more is coming here every day. And with all that said, are you surprised that I, I feel like this market is a little bit behind when it comes to like you don't think of whether fair or unfair, you don't think of South Florida as being a hotbed for the fight fan. Like we feel like this sure. market is still really building. But but what you say is true. I mean, you have two of the best gyms in the world here with a lot of other smaller gyms scattered around, but it all starts with American Top Team and the Black Zillions. Like I'm surprised that South Florida is not the epicenter of MMA. You know, I, listen, I think it will be, but there's 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 a challenge, right? South Florida is an amazing place to live. There's a ton of great things to do. There's tremendous cultural diversity. So, people have choices. So it's incumbent upon us as promoters to not only put on good fights, but to entertain. And, and so that's going to be our challenge. You know, we're probably not going to be there on the first show. We're still building up to it. The fights will be phenomenal. But I think you'll see the evolution where we're going to put on more of an entertainment and sports extravaganza to create a, a real energy for people to want to come. Um, you know, we're still mapping out what that's going to look like, but I think that that's what's requisite to be successful here, because there are so many choices. Yeah, the talent's here, so now we have to showcase that talent, but do it in a way, in an environment, and on a platform that that's incredibly entertaining. We've got great producers, we produce great shows, so now we got to just add a little bit to the equation, and, and I think we'll be there. Lex McMahon joining us. He's the COO of Titan Fighting Championships. They've got their big show, Titan FC 38. Coming up next Saturday at Mikasuki. It'll also be streaming at UFCFightPass.com. But for you know anybody who's in the area, we encourage you to go out and check out the show. The Mikasuki is a nice venue. I've been there, Lex, for pro wrestling events. I've been there for boxing events before. And you were telling me before we started this interview that I hadn't realized this. They've never had an MMA event before at Mikasuki. You guys will be the first. Yeah, and I think that that's exciting for us to be able to you know kind of lead the charge, so to speak. Um, there's a lot of great MMA promotions that are currently here, that have been here. Um, for whatever reason, they haven't been at the Mikasuki. We get to be the ones to kind of go in and carry the flag, and that's great. mikasuki has been a good partner to us thus far. I think they're going to help us put on a great event, and uh, we get to help them kind of bring some awareness to, to what they do. And uh, hopefully it's a good partnership moving on for the future. And Titan, uh, you guys also do a lot for the military. Uh, you were recently on an Armed Forces tour. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, 100%, man. I mean, I, I did... Uh, eight years total in the Marine Corps. That's amazing. Um, wow. That is my passion. I wouldn't last eight days. So, <laughs> there were some times that I wasn't <laughs> sure if I would or not, but especially I, 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 I used the a-hole word with a drill instructor uh, within the first week of boot camp. Oh, man. So it was a long three months of Marine Corps boot camp. For I, me. Have you seen the movie Full Metal Jacket? Oh, yeah. I, I picture it being just like that. It... it, it Back in the, as they say, back in the old core, <laughs> back in the early 90s when I went through, it was like that. Wow. Um, but, you know, listen, because of my experiences uh, in the Marine Corps, I did two tours in Somalia. Um, I've lost a lot of friends in uh, the war on terror since 9-11. Uh, it's become my passion to continue to serve by serving those who are serving. Um, so 
we, I, I sit on the board of four different uh, military-oriented nonprofit organizations, uh, two of which are, are, are partners uh, to um, Titan. That's the A Hero Foundation uh, and the Sean Brock Foundation. But then also I work with Special Operations Wounded Warriors. Um, so organizationally, we do a lot. We always have veterans at our shows. You know, I give them the VIP treatment, take them in, show them the truck, you know, bring side, cage side seats, you know, the whole thing. Um, but we took things a little bit further where I reached out to four uh, of our athletes and I said, listen, man, I, I want to go, I want to tra train the troops MMA, right? It, it's an initiative I started with my friends from Ranger Up probably about six years ago. Uh, and we've continued to carry it forward. Um, so I took with me Pat Healy, Jose Shorty Torres, uh, Jason Witt, and Ricky Simone. Uh, we went on an Armed Forces Entertainment Tour, which was absolutely just incredible. They took us, um, we were supposed to go to Kuwait and Iraq. Uh, we landed in Kuwait, we went to a couple of the bases, and the situation on the ground in Iraq was extremely volatile at that point. A, a Marine Staff Sergeant um, was killed, eight were wounded on one of the bases in Iraq. Army soldier was killed a couple days later. Brussels happened. Pakistan, I mean, there was just a lot of things in a very short period of time, so the visas for Iraq were pulled. But all we did was course correct, and we went to 12 different bases in Kuwait. Um, and, you know, those, those folks were on 30-minute windows where, you know, actually one, the first base we went to um, was Al Jabber. The Marines there were on a 30-minute lead time where they had to go to be ready to go to Iraq. We met some of the Marines that went into Iraq, and one of those Marines happened to be one of the Marines that was killed, oh, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so it, it made it very real and very personal. Um, but the great thing is I reached out to all our corporate partners. We had um, over 6,000 pounds of gear donated. We had Zebra donate two 20-foot by 20-foot masks. We had Bad Boy donate, man, I can't even tell you, like 60 sets of, of, of gloves, mitts, tie pads, shins, on and on and on. On it, you know, donated a bunch of gear. Um, Sorenex donated gear. I mean, on and on, six thousand pounds of gear, man. Like that to me is incredible. And and we were able to brighten days and, and create smiles by handing out that gear. And then the guys trained. They yeah. all trained. That's really cool, man. Especially here, and uh, I'm sure that really touched you guys in a personal way. Being able to chat with uh, with one of the Marines who ended up passing away. It's unbelievable. Very very real stuff here. And thank you for your service, by the way. Uh, thanks, man. I appreciate it, brother. Yeah, as we're speaking with Lex McMahon, COO of Titan FC, Titan FC 38, coming up next Saturday at Mikasuki. Real quick here, Lex, uh, y your views from a, from a promoter's perspective, what the UFC is going through right now with Conor McGregor. Do you have any thought on who is at fault here? Is there any way they can compromise this? At the end of the day, I, I think that Conor played chicken with the wrong people. He, he bluffed his way, you know, he's done an amazing job for the sport. Like, he really has, and I and all credit, but I think he was expecting that he he would get a different answer. Hmm. And and Dana and Lorenzo said, look, we're not going to... We're not going to play that game. You, you ha These are certain obligations that have to be fulfilled. It's part of your promotional contract. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that, that from the UFC perspective, they're doing the right thing. Um, do I believe there's going to be a compromise? 100%, man. At the end of the day, there's way too much money at stake. For Conor, for the UFC, he is the star. Loss, no loss, does not matter. He is the star. Um, but I, I think that you're already starting to see them kind of coming together, even though you know cards, you know the cards been called or the fight's been called off, and this and that. you know Conor's statement that happened. I, I just think eventually, whether it's UFC 200 or down the road, Conor McGregor fights again very soon, and, and it's on a, a major card. Hopefully, it's UFC 200, you know, against Nate Diaz. But if not, you know, I'm sure they're gonna they're gonna figure it out. It's just he's too big of a star. There's too much money at, at play, but. It's a tough situation, man. I respect I respect Connor for stick, you know, holding his ground, but I also understand from a promoter standpoint why the UFC has taken the position that it has. At the end of the day, your big stars have to help you step up and sell the card. Well said. And, and before we let you go, man, let people know where they can find Titan online and where they can get tickets to that event next week. Yeah, absolutely, man. So uh, for the tickets next week, it's uh, cagechicks.com backslash Titan. Uh, pretty easy, and you can go to TitanFighting.com, uh, our website, and uh, Titan Fighting and on uh, Instagram and, and Twitter as well. 
Um, check us out. Looking forward to it. And obviously, the fights will be streaming live on UFC Fight Pass. Definitely check that out. Well. Slex McMahon, CEO of Titan FC. Thank you so much, man. Awesome, brother. Appreciate you. Cool.